Hi, my name is Will Cadella, and today I'm going to show you how to use some of the advanced features in Google Presentations. First, you'll probably notice that I have a grid in the background. This is not a function of Google Presentations, but a handy little trick I'll show you is if you go up to Insert Image and you do a Google search for grid paper, you can actually download a transparent grid paper and apply that to your background there. And you can have a grid in the background that kind of help you align different things throughout your presentation. Now you already see that I have some images and some text placed in there. If you ever want to apply a layout to it, you can just come out to the layout button, choose from a layout, like maybe for instance the title and body layout. I'll go ahead and click on that and it automatically provides a layout for us. I'll go ahead and undo that by pressing Control Z. I can also come up here to the undo button. If you need some custom layouts that aren't covered in these options right here, you can come up to slide and then come down to edit master and that will give you the ability to edit the different master slides within that theme. Now like my other tutorials for Google Apps for Education, I suggest actually using a Google Docs table to be inserted as opposed to the table that's actually in Google Presentation or Google Drawing because it gives you some more functions there. Now let's get to a very exciting feature here in Google Apps for Education and that's the ability to hyperlink different elements. And when you do that, you take what would be a, just a regular Google Presentation or a drawing or a picture and you actually turn it into a very powerful interactive online learning tool. Now if you see if I click on the different elements on this picture, you'll notice that I've already created some graphics over this picture of the brain here. Now you can do this by simply using a polyline tool and I'll show you how to use that in just a minute here. With this graphic, you can actually hyperlink each individual part and you see I've already created graphics to overlay each part except for this one right down here over the spinal cord. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this. One tool I suggest using on a regular basis is the magnifying tool. That will just make navigation a little bit easier here. Now to create a part of your picture as a hyperlink, you want to go ahead and create a shape over that part. And the best tool to do that is the polyline tool, especially if it's an irregular shape like this spinal cord here. What's great about the polyline tool is every time I make a click, it'll make a point for my line. As you see, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'll just go ahead and trace over this spinal cord here. Close off the shape, and there it is. Now I can change that shape, because obviously I don't want it just covering over the spinal cord like that. I can go ahead and make the line transparent, and I can make the shape itself transparent. Now it's invisible if I wanted to use just the background image. Say for example if you had a picture of people or a, um, any type of other picture that you'd wanted a completely clear graphic over. However for this particular graphic I do want to shade this just a little bit like the other parts of the brain here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a fill color to this and I'm going to add a outline color as well. I'm going to make this outline actually a little thicker. I'm going to go up to a 3 right there. Next what I want to do is actually make the fill color semi-translucent. Now if I click on it and then click on my paint bucket tool, and this is my fill tool right here, I can change the color. I can also make it completely transparent like that or I can come down to custom and then I can make it semi-transparent. Now I can change the darkness of the color, but here is the transparency slider bar here. I can make it semi-translucent. That's about it right there. I'll go ahead and click on OK. And now I have a semi-translucent fill there, and you can see how that would look. The next thing I want to do is actually use the hyperlinking function. And you see, once I have this object chosen, it gives me the ability to hyperlink it. When I click on that, it will give me a window that will link it to a URL or I could search for a specific URL but for this presentation I want to go ahead and link it to a specific slide and I know that the slide I want to link it to is actually slide number seven so I want to scroll down to slide number seven here click on that and then click on apply 
And now when this part of the picture is clicked, this violet part, it will automatically jump to slide 7. Now let me go ahead and resize this so we can see our entire slide again. I'm going to go ahead and click on fit to screen there. Now each one of these, as you'll notice when I click on them, is hyperlinked to a different slide depending on the part that you click on. Now that was on our first slide right here. As you notice it has the black box around it. This is sort of our starting point. Now as you probably already noticed in this presentation I have many other slides actually made and I'll go through those real quick. These are actually duplicates of the first slide with added information that outline the different parts of the brain. And you'll even notice that I have some more graphics. These are um, animated GIFs. I'll show you how to drop those in just a minute. And there are the different slides here. Now if we go ahead and present this, you'll see how this actually functions. When a person clicks on the different parts, it's actually going to different slides. But since the slide was duplicated, it looks like it's just these pop-ups that are actually coming up here. And this would be a great learning tool that's very interactive and pretty easy to make. I should also note that it does take some amount of forethought when it comes to hyperlinking your slides. You have to know exactly what you're hyperlinking and you do have to kind of plan it out a little bit but this is a great way to actually create online books and interactive online learning graphics. And as covered in a previous tutorial you can actually embed this right onto a website. Now let me show you another very powerful tool in Google Apps for Education and specifically here in presentation. If I click on the second slide, I can actually research right from this presentation itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these two words frontal lobe and then I right click on them and then I can come down, I can define it. And that's actually what I did to get the definition that you see inside that call out box. But I'm, I can also research it. Now when I click on research, it actually brings up a Google search right in presentation without opening up new tabs or new windows. So it saves a little bit of time and a little bit of navigation right there. And I can click actually on this first link. That'll pop open a new window for me. And there I have the graphics. Now you notice I have an animated GIF right here. I can actually um, use this. I can take this and drag it right off into my desktop. And there it is on my desktop and I'll click back into my presentation and then I can just drag it right back into my presentation. It's going to take a few moments here to load up and while it does that I'll also show you that you can just actually click on a word by right clicking on it and define any word. Saves you a lot of time actually researching and is a great way to actually do the research right from the presentation itself. Now one little note that I'll make is that to save some time actually making these slides and doing all this hyperlinking, what I did is actually hyperlink just the first slide and then I duplicated that over and over again. That keeps me from having to go from each slide and duplicating the same thing over and over again. Another way you can actually think of this type of presentation is not actually a slide presentation itself, but actually like its own self-contained little miniature website now. Another thing I'd like to show you, and the last thing is, you can actually present with your speaker notes. And when you do this, it opens up a window that looks like this. And you see the presentation in the background, and you have a timer now. And that's a nice little handy thing to do um, when you're actually presenting it. Another note that I'll make is you can actually present this and use a screen capture program like I'm using right now, which is uh, screener.com and you can make a movie out of it as well. And those are some of the advanced features in Google Presentations. For more tutorials, check back at linkucation.com.